warm months approach, it's time to make sure the central air conditioning is ready to go. That's no truer than in Scottsdale, Arizona, where summer temperatures can reach more than 100 degrees. And where the competition among air conditioning repair companies is fierce. Offers like this, a full inspection for a modest $39.99, are common. But consumer advocates say, watch out. They're advertising that they'll come out and tune up your air conditioner for, say, $30, $25, $40. Matt Failing is with the Better Business Bureau in Phoenix, Arizona. If this is a company that, uh, you know, doesn't have a good reputation, you know, you're going to be stuck with them. Jenny and her boyfriend, Eric, let us borrow their house and equip it with hidden cameras. All in order to see how well repair companies know their stuff when called for routine service. But first, we asked not one, but a group of experts to take a look at Jenny's house and air conditioning system to make sure it was in working order. The house has two air conditioning units. This one is just a few years old. The other is more than 20 years old, but still works fine. Our experts cleaned and tuned up both units, topped them off with coolant, and after replacing a part in the older unit, a minor repair, Jenny's AC system got a clean bill of health. It's good operating condition right now. And while the older unit may be less energy efficient than the newer one, nothing is broken and it works fine. Jenny shouldn't have to spend a dime for any repairs. Hey there, I'm looking to schedule a tune-up with you guys for this Thursday. She began by answering this ad from a company called Ace Air. On the phone, Jenny said she thought nothing was wrong with her AC units and just wanted the advertised inspection. You both for $54.90. She was told servicing both air conditioning units would cost $54.90 and not a dime more. Here comes Tim, the technician from Ace Air. Hi there. How are you? As Tim goes to work, the compressor isn't too, too high. Yeah. We're watching it all from the control room upstairs. Your Freon charge is perfect. This is where your high pressure in the unit is. Okay. So what is he actually doing now? He was checking the ratings of the capacitors. What does the capacitor do? Regulates power to its motors. But despite what our expert said, he has bad news for Jenny. It's a capacitor. It's testing bad. Tim says Jenny should replace a part called a capacitor, something that helps the motor run. What I recommend, change this capacitor, do a coil clean. He also suggests she have the coils clean. Coils carry the coolant. And the coil clean is what? Um, about 90. But we actually had the capacitors and coils checked the day before, and they were just fine. Jenny gives Tim the go-ahead to do the work. So your total right there. 37205. Okay. Yeah, it's just That's when I come downstairs. Got your check here. 37205. How you doing? Hey, how are you? Good. Tim quickly realizes who I am. So, yeah, you're freaking I'm, me out. I, okay, relax. <laughs> you, you, you gave this young woman a lot of good, honest information today. Okay. Yeah, Chris Hanson, I, am, I am Chris Hansen. How are you? Nice to meet you. you. Good, good. So I let me just... Show. Thank you very much. We're doing a story on the quality of work people get when they call service people to their homes. You know, we have cameras oh, around, sure. you know. I know how it works. Okay. And Tim explains that because Jenny's unit is old, he just wanted to make sure it lasted through the summer. Capacitors are number one reason for breakdown. In sure. Arizona. And because the capacitors looked old, he says his suggestion to replace them was simply a preventative measure. What I recommend is change this capacitor and change the capacitor upstairs. The impression that I got listening in was that the capacitors were bad and need to be replaced. I mean, that's what I took out of it. Oh, yeah? Well, that's not necessarily what I meant. I meant more that they're old, they're rusted, they should be replaced. I just wanted to ask you about it. That sounds like it would make sense to your average consumer. But our expert said rust on the capacitor doesn't mean anything is wrong. Did we get our money's worth? I don't think you did, uh, mainly because the capacitors were operationally fine. Remember, most homeowners don't have experts in the upstairs bedroom. Jenny could have been out almost $400. Next, we did something else. We wanted to know what would happen if we did something to the system that should be very easy to fix. Would a repairman be able to diagnose a simple problem? So the expert pulled out these fuses by just an inch, cutting all power to the system. 
He says any credible technician should be able to find the problem and push the fuses back in. Will Rafael from George Brazil Air Conditioning figure it out? Bingo. He sees the problem and fixes it. On top of that, now that he knows it was just a loose fuse, he tells Jenny her system is fine, even the old unit. And listen to this. Okay, so how much do I owe you? Oh, Raphael, I, that's, that's not, I don't feel like that's right. Are you sure? Yeah, that's, you don't touch anything for checking it out. Job well done by Raphael. Coming up, will our other repairmen do as well? What is this, man? You guys trying to test us here? Actually, I am. See, here's something that you need to know. We had that system tested. Is that the fuse? And coming up from... The only thing wrong with Jenny's older air conditioning unit was these loose fuses. We know that because we deliberately pulled them out, cutting off power. That'll shut down the compressor. And what was your name? I'm sorry. Jim. We're testing the expertise of home repairmen. And these techs who showed up did exactly the right thing. They pushed the fuses back in and told Jenny no other work was needed. Raphael wouldn't even accept payment. So how much do I owe you? Will George from America's Comfort Heating and Cooling do the same? He quickly finds the loose fuses, pushes them back in, and does his inspection. But instead of telling Jenny the job's done, he has some bad news. Do you have a leak somewhere? Her system, he says, is leaking Freon, the coolant inside the air conditioner. But how would he know? Testing a leak is a long and complicated process, something that George didn't do. So there's a leak? Oh yeah, 100%, there's a leak. George says dealing with a leak could get expensive, especially if it's in the long, snaking coil where the Freon circulates. You're looking probably about $1,500 to replace the coil. Either we can look for the leak and fix the leak, and if it's in one of the coils, then it's not worth it. It's just worth getting rid of the whole thing. Okay. Then there's the cost of adding Freon. We have to recharge the system, so you're looking to probably buy 1900 bucks. 1900 bucks. okay. And how would the cost of that repair compare to getting a brand new air conditioning unit? Uh, it's 3826 3826 That's $3,826. Bottom line, what, I mean, just what do we need to do? I would replace. We just replace it, okay. Crap. We're the talking whole the, whole, the whole thing. All right, stay here and I'll be right back. Okay. It's time for me to have a chat with George. George, Chris, what exactly is wrong with the air conditioning unit? I think it's uh, it's just a little bit low on freon. I don't know how low it is, but what you told Jenny is that it's about half empty of freon. Yeah, I think it's about half empty. But like I said, again, I have to weigh it all in. That's why I can't give her a price on the, on the freon. I understand that. What is this, man? Are you guys trying to test us here? Actually, I am. Yeah? See, here's something that you need to know, George. We had that system tested. The only issue with that system is that the fuse... George, come on, I want to talk to you. George sees our cameras and quickly heads to the door. George, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on the quality of service. We've got a 20-year-old unit, man. George is right. It is an old system. But the fact is, even though it isn't as energy efficient as the new one, it works just fine, according to our expert, Carl. It is up in age. And, you know, its efficiency is not what the newer one is, but operationally it's sound. Had Jenny followed George's advice, she'd have been out thousands of dollars to replace an air conditioning unit that wasn't broken. The AC guy just got here. Here comes our next technician, Tony, from Abode Air. All of a sudden, I can feel um, air, but it's not cool. Tony comes in and, after meeting Jenny, heads back outside, checks himself out, and gets his tools. But how carefully does he check out the air conditioner? He appears to examine the circuit board and take some notes, but he never spots the loose fuses we deliberately pulled out. Instead, he jumps on the fact that it's an older unit and says he's found an entirely hey. new problem. How's it look? Well, you got some bad news on the older one. I do. Yeah, it has a, what we call an LRA. It's a locked up rotor amp. Tony tells Jenny that the problem is something called a locked rotor amp, meaning her motor isn't working. Okay, so it's just bad. Yeah, it's The it's, unit is completely bad. Yeah, it's just bad. It's shot. Yeah. Tony's best advice, get a new yeah. unit. Do you know how much a new unit would cost? Just a rough estimate. We'll say 5000 rough estimate. 
$5,000? Remember, all that's wrong are the loose fuses. Hey, how are you? So I head downstairs to speak with Tony. So all in, what do you estimate this will cost? Uh, probably about 5200 5200 Good, and that's the estimate right there? Yeah, i got to still finish filling it out. Yeah. Well, let me, Tony, before you go, there's just there's something that I need to tell you. Sure. That, that's, I'm really not the man of the house. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Okay. And we're doing a story on the quality of service provided by repairmen and mechanics to sure. come to the house. Sure. And so a couple things. Go ahead, have a seat, relax. Okay. A couple questions. No, in fact, you know, I'm not going to uh, <laughs> have a seat. i got to get things buttoned. Well, I'll walk, I'll walk with so you. Please because there's, there's, there's something I want to show you out there. Great. Things that you yeah, said needed to be repaired on this unit uh -huh. weren't broken. That's the bottom line. So I wouldn't say that that system works fine at all. The bottom line is, on a 24-year-old system, they're going to have multiple problems with that. I don't care what anybody says. And yeah, he stuck with his story, despite the fact that I pointed out the real yeah. problem minutes earlier. Right, can I show you one thing? Go ahead. Oh, the disconnect. Works just fine now. Yeah, it does. All you had to do was check just right there. In, yeah. Good to go. Yeah. Uh, I didn't push the fuse in, but... Well, why didn't you push it in? Tony? Because I didn't notice that it was sticking out. But wouldn't you check that as a matter of routine? No, no, no. You don't go to jobs where the, the disconnect is sticking out. We just check the fuse. So what can you do to make sure the repair person you call is the right one for the job? First, when someone gives you the bad news, get a second opinion. So this is a must-do right now. But one of the best ways to find someone who knows their stuff is by word of mouth. Get a referral from someone who's had a good repair experience. That way, the odds of finding someone you can trust will go way up. We want to hear from you.